Now, what is a force? We've been talking about force, we haven't really defined what a force is. Most books talk about force or define force as being a pull or a push. Uh, I'm not convinced that this is the way, the best way to talk about a force. So let me see if I can give you a better idea or uh, come up with a better definition of what a force is. To do that, let me start with the idea of an interaction, the interaction between two objects. I'm going to define interaction as a process that occurs when the physical properties of two objects are modified due to their proximity. So the key idea with interaction is that, uh, that the objects must be close enough so that they can feel each other, so that the presence of one object starts to affect the, uh, the other object. This is what we would call an interaction. So let me give you an example, a silly example, of uh, human interaction. Suppose that we put two people who are physically attracted to each other and we bring them in close proximity. So when they're far away, there's not much going on, but as they approach each other, then the physical presence of one of them starts to affect the other uh, person. So this is an example of an interaction. The physical proximity between the two objects modifies the physical properties of them. Maybe the heart rate, the heart rate goes up, maybe they start sweating, there is physical, physiological changes occurring in their bodies when they are close to each other, but not when they're far away. This would be an example of an interaction. The more typical kind of situation that we have in physics is when two objects move towards each other, start interacting, and that interaction changes the way they move. This is what we call a force. A force would be a measure of the strength and the direction of the interaction between the two objects. In this interaction between the two objects, the presence, the proximity of one object, changes the way the other object is moving, and vice versa. So the motion of both objects is affected by the interaction with the other object. Now that we have a better idea of what a force is, it's now time to talk about Newton's laws of motion. Newton's first law basically says that an object that is at rest or moving with constant velocity will continue to do so if and only if the net force acting on the object is zero. This is also called the law of inertia. The first law also tells us a few things that are important. The first one is that the force is anything that disturbs the state of equilibrium, rest or constant velocity of an object. The second one is that inertial reference frames exist these are the systems of reference in which objects move with constant velocity when they are isolated, when there are no forces acting on them. Please note that not every system of reference is inertial. For an observer inside a bus accelerating from rest, a ball in the front of the bus accelerates towards the back. Given that the ball can be assumed to be frictionless, since it can roll, then no force can account for its measure acceleration with respect to the observer in the bus. Let me show you this with a, an animation that I made. Okay, so here's the animation. We have a bus here and an observer inside the bus and a ball also inside the bus and a chicken that is standing on the ground. So we have two systems of reference here, the observer inside the bus and the chicken. So first let's focus on the motion of the ball with respect to the observer inside the bus. So for that observer the ball seems to be moving towards him because uh, the observer is moving forward, the ball has no friction with the floor of the bus which means that there is no force that is acting on the ball so there's no reason for the ball to change its state of motion. So nevertheless the observer does see the ball accelerating towards him or her. So in this system of reference the ball does have an acceleration even though there is no force that the observer can measure acting on the ball. Now for the system of reference of the chicken standing on the ground the ball does not accelerate. The position of the ball with respect to the chicken doesn't seem to, be, uh, to change 
because the chicken concludes there is no force acting on the ball. There is no friction. There is no reason why the ball would start to accelerate. So for the chicken, the uh, Newton's law seems to, seems to hold true, but for the observer inside the bus, Newton's first law does not seem to be true. The ball has an acceleration even though there is no force acting on the ball. So what, what this tells you is that Newton's laws, they're only valid in inertial systems of reference. In this uh, animation, the chicken is the only inertial system of reference because the chicken is standing on the ground, the ground is part of the earth, and the earth can be considered to a very good approximation to be an inertial system of reference.